Hi guys, welcome to Tactic Devs. In today's video, I'll be showing you guys how to create a round image custom control in WPF. So I already have a project set up here. Without further delay, let's get to the coding. So in my project, I added in an image and I'll be using this image to illustrate the use of this control. So I'll go to my project and add in new item. So under the WPF tab, I'll select custom control and I'll just give it a name round image. Okay, so Visual Studio went ahead and added in a class called round image that inherits from the control class. I'll get rid of this summary here. So basically this class is our custom control class and I'm going to declare some properties that are going to hold information associated to this control. Now I'm going to declare them in form of dependency properties. So this is very useful for data binding. So by using this code snippet prop dp and pressing tab twice, we get this code snippet. So I'm going to declare the first property and it will be of the type image source. I'll just give it a name image. And this is going to store information about the image that we are going to use in this control. I'll change its owner class to round image, which is basically this class. And I'll set its property metadata to no. get rid of this comment. I'm going to add in another property and this will be of the type double. I'll give it a name zoom factor. So this property will be used to set the zoom level on the image. I'll set its default data to 1. Now it's important that whenever you're using a literal that you specify what type. If we leave it at one here, the compiler will interpret this as an integer. Now if you look at the two tip there, it says int32, but the property declared here is a double. So I need to specify that this one here is actually a double. So by adding D at the end, the compiler will now know that this is a double. I'll get rid of this comment here and I'll declare another dependency property and it will be of the type double as well and I'll give this one a name of x translate. So this property will be used to align the image along the x axis. And I'll give it a default value of 0. i also specify here that it's a double by adding D. I'll create another property for the y-axis. Okay, so I'm going to create the final property, which is going to be also of the type double. And I'll give it a name border width. So this property will be used to set the width of the border because this control is going to have a border around it. I'll set its value default. I'll set that to zero.
Okay, so I declared some dependency properties. I'll just go through. We have the first one is of the type image source. And the second one is double. That's a zoom factor. The X and Y translate as well as a border width property. So every time you add in a custom control, Visual Studio is going to add in a folder called themes. And this folder is going to contain a file called generic. I'll just go ahead and open up this file. So this file is actually a resource dictionary that has a style defined. Now, if we take a closer look at the styles target type, you will notice that it targets the round image class. And the round image class is the class of the control that was just created. Now this style here sets the template property and assigns a control template. So a control template is what defines the visual appearance of a control. So that's the stuff that you see on the screen when the control is rendered. Now apparently we only have a border defined here. So if I go ahead and compile and use this control in an application, the only thing that I'm going to see is a border. So I'll be redefining this control template. So I'll go ahead and get rid of the border and I'll add in an element, which is a view box. So the view box will help me resize the control in a proportional way so that the aspect ratio is reserved. I'll add in an ellipse that's going to provide the round shape. Now the ellipse has got a property called the stroke property, which is basically the line that surrounds the ellipse. And I'm going to set the value of the stroke, which is the color of that line. I'm going to bind it to a value using a template binding. And I'll bind it to the border brush property. Now this class round image inherits from the control class and the control class has got a property called border brush. So I'll be binding this strokes value to that property. So by using the template binding, what I'm simply saying is for this stroke, get the value from the border brush property of this class here. Now it also has another property called stroke thickness. So I'll be binding it to the property that I created earlier on, which is the border width here. Now the ellipse has got another property called the fill property. So basically the fill property is what defines the color of the ellipse. Now the fill property takes in a brush. WPF has got a class called image brush. So in place of a solid color, I can actually use an image brush and an image will be rendered in the fill of the ellipse. So I'll set that by saying ellipse then fill property and I'll use an image brush for that. Now this image brush has got a property called image source. So image source is what's going to define where the image can be found and that's the image that's going to be rendered in the control. So here I'm going to bind it to the image value that I created earlier on here. So that's image and it's of the same type which is image source. Now I can use a template binding but WPF won't allow me to do that. And the reason for that is this class inherits from a freezable class. So it doesn't allow template bindings. Now I'm going to use the ordinary binding, which is just binding. Now, basically the difference between template binding and binding is just that template binding is more of an optimized version of binding that's suited for uh, control templates. So in this case, I'll use binding and I'll say relative source. And for the relative source, I'll go for templated parent. And the path to that value will be set to image. Uh, 
Okay, so in this binding expression here, what I'm actually saying is get the value from the object that's going to use this as a template, the templated parent. Okay, so get the image property and use it to display the image. Now, I want the image inside this ellipse to be able to scale. So that's basically zoom in and out. And I also want it to be able to move along the X and Y axis. So in the case that you want to align that image to a, to a specific position, you can actually do that. So I'll do that by setting the relative transform property on this image brush. So I'll just call image brush and I'll say relative transform. Now, inside this relative transform, I'm going to add in a transform group. So what the transform group does is it allows me to set more than one type of a transform. So in this case, I want zooming as well as uh, panning. So I'm going to use the scale transform and the translate transform. So here I'm going to define a scale transform. Now, when the image is scaling, it's going to use an origin to scale. So from that origin, I can set the X center and the Y center to a specific origin. Now, because I'm using a relative transform, so it only uses values between zero and one. So for me to really go for the center, I need to get the half of the width and half of the height of the image. So I can do that by just using 0 0.5, which would be half of the height and half of the image of the width. So I'll go for center Y. I'll do the same 0 0.5. Okay. Now for the scale X, I'm going to use a binding as well. I can't use a template binding for this because it also inherits from the freezable class. So I'll go relative source. Again, I'll use templated parent. And I'll set the path to zoom factor. So I'll be scaling this image based on the zoom factor. So for the scale X, I'll use the zoom factor. So I'll just go ahead and copy. And I'll also be using the same zoom factor for the scale Y property because this will be proportional scaling. So everything will scale at the same uh, proportion. So I'll also use the same property, which is the zoom factor. Okay, now I'm going to add in another transform. And this transform will be of the type translate transform. So it's, it has a scale, it has a transform property. So along the X axis, I need to set the X value here and using a binding again a relative source templated parent I'll specify the path by saying use the X translate property I'll just go ahead and copy this So I'll do the same for the Y property and I'll set the path to Y translate. Okay, so we have an image brush and I've set some relative translates here and that's a scale and uh, translate transforms. Okay. Now this image has got a property called stretch it's important to also assign this property. I'll assign that to uniform. So as we scale the property, the image should also scale in a uniform way. So that's for the height and the width. So that should be uniform scaling. 
So I guess this this is it for the control. I will also set the height and the width on the ellipse here. So I'll give it an initial height of 100 pixels and width of 100 pixels. So these initial values are important so that um, the view box can know where, where to start resizing from. Okay, so I'm going to do that and I'll go to the main window because I think that's it for the control here. So I'll go to the main window here and I'm going to add in now before I do that, I first need to build the solution. So I'll go ahead and build the solution. Okay, so the solution was built successfully. So I'm going to add in the control in the grid. So it's the round image. I'll give it a height and width of 100 pixels. Okay, so when I select this control and here in the properties panel at the bottom tab, I'll just open up this. So you see there's a property called image. So I'll set that image to the cells image and that's the image I added to the project. Okay, so now you can see the image appears here. Now I'm just going to resize this to make it slightly bigger. And when I resize, you can see it resizes and reserves the aspect ratio. And that's because we added in a view box in the template. Now I'm going to set the border brush. I'll set that to a shade of orange. And I'll set the border width. I'll set that to five pixels. Okay, so here can see now apparently the image is a bit far off so I want to zoom it inwards so I'll use the zoom factor so I'll try to zoom it to by a factor of 1.5 okay maybe let's say 1.8 okay something like that so right away you see that the image is zoomed in but is a bit misaligned so I want to shift it along the y-axis and I can do that by using the Y translate property. So now because in the control I used a relative transform, which means I use values between zero and one. Now, apparently right now there's a zoom factor on this image. So the values are kind of offset. However, it be because it's still a relative transform. So the transformations have to be made in small increments unless I used a transform which is different from a relative transform that way I can use absolute values like pixels let's say I wanted to move this image downwards by 50 pixels I could just type in 50 pixels that's if I chose to use the transform now here I'll try 0 0.2 and that's not enough maybe 0 0.3 Okay, let's go for 0 0.4. Okay, something like that. Okay, so we have the control here, round. It has a border and the image is aligned perfectly. So I'll go ahead and test the application and see what happens. All right, so right now the application is up and running and you can see the round image control displays perfectly. So that's it for today's video and remember to like and subscribe to this channel and i'll see you in the next one